Wake that ass up Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest on the line, Jasmine Sullivan. Welcome. Hi. Good morning, stranger. <laughs> What's that? You ain't it's been put out, forever. You ain't put out a project since what? 2015 it was a reality show. It's been a minute, yes. What, what do yep. you do? Well, how are you How are you feeling, first of all? I just want to check in with you since we haven't seen you in a while. We know there's a pandemic going on, and clearly you've been inspired to put out some music. So how are you doing Yeah, I see right candles now? burning. It looks beautiful back there. You look like you're in a Ain't nice no place. Candles. <laughs> I thought I see some smoke coming from somewhere, some incense or something. Whatever. I'm doing good. I'm doing um, good. I, of course, everybody is... Um, adjusting to new life or whatever. And for me personally, I've had some things that happen um, that's kind of flipped my life upside down. But but besides that, um, everything is really good. Um, I can't I can't really complain right now. now. You said something that happened. What happened? Talk to us. What, 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 what's, what's been going on? Don't talk what to us if you don't want to talk to us. Okay. No, no, no. I don't mind. I really don't mind. Okay. Um, my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer, IBC, mm. a year ago. And um, anybody who's ever gone through um, getting that diagnosis knows that it just totally flips your world upside down. Mm. And, you know, you don't really know what to do at that point. So um, we've just been... Um, going through that with her and supporting her and praying and and um just loving up on each other as much as we can and so that's really been a lot of my focus um so as well as corona i've been dealing with that but like i said i mean my faith has gotten so much stronger it's like nothing shakes me at this point like once you get a diagnosis of cancer with your mother mm -hmm. it's like nothing else is worse than that so you feel like you can handle anything pretty much so so mentally, emotionally, spiritually, have you been guarding yourself? Are, are you are you healthy in all those areas? Definitely. I mean, we just got finished having Bible study uh, last night, me and my parents and my brother. So mm. our spiritual life has definitely grown. It has to. Like when you get to a point where you feel like you can't do anything, there's nothing you could do about this thing, you have to um, turn and depend on God. And that's, that's right. That's what we've done. So. Let go and let God. Mm -hmm. Give it to him. It has to be challenging, definitely during this pandemic, because, I mean, they're not allowing people in hospitals. So I know treatment, they weren't doing treatment for a little bit. So I know it's been been, been a struggle, I'm sure. Yeah, it's been hard. We haven't been able to um, go to her uh, appointments and stuff like that like we used to. Mm -hmm. So she's she's been soldiering up and kind of doing it herself. My dad has been amazing um, with her. Thankfully, you know, she has a husband that, that rides like that because a lot of people are going through it and they don't have anybody um, so she's doing really good. It's been hard, definitely, because of Corona, but we we getting through it. Yeah. Well, speaking of God, you know, since man. you said she has a, a husband that that rides for her, so that gives you hope to have a, a man that's going to ride for you too, right? Yeah, I have. You know, I have a man. Okay, you good. Because sometimes it can be difficult. I know a lot of women have been through like difficult relationships and then they start saying there's no good men out here, and so it is a blessing when you can find somebody that actually is a counterpart. You know what? I've never gotten to a point after a relationship has ended badly where I feel like I'll never find love again. I think um, I just never got to that point. I'm always optimistic about it and I always feel like, you know, um, it'll come to me. That just wasn't the one. It was some lessons I needed to learn and that just wasn't it. But I never feel like helpless, like I'll never find a love again. Yeah, and it's their loss, and it's all part of God's plan, right? That's right. It's their loss. <laughs> you know, look, look, I, I love the fact that you're speaking about God because I want to talk to you about one of God's greatest creation, and that's these hoes, okay? Because you, <laughs> <laughs> right? you, you named your new album Hotels, okay? Yes, I did. I heard Hotels. A I heard a couple of records. Why did you name it Hotels? Um, I named it hotels because I feel like for so long, the term ho has been meant to be degrading, um, especially with, when it comes to women. And I have seen since I've, you know, had my break, I've seen women kind of stand in their power and kind of like just do their own thing and take up space. And I'm so inspired by that, like a woman who knows who she is, who's not ashamed of who she is or where she came from. Like for me, Cardi B is everything because for me, before Cardi B, it was no woman that was kind of like, I'm a stripper. Yeah, I, you know, I, I do this, I do that. I've done this, I've done that. And, um, you know, 
and still been able to be successful and people love her for that. So I, I was I was inspired by women like that who just stand in their power. So, so what's the definition? Well, you know, I wanted to ask you. Little Kim did that and Nikki and Foxy well, yeah, and Trina. Yeah. Well, she said Cardi to be a stripper, so. So yeah, I, there have been women. There have been women to, to do it, but I feel like there's been a resurgence of women like everywhere, kind of, and not just like being a stripper. Like even Lizzo being a a big um, woman, just being like, "This is who I am." Like women really standing in their power and not letting um, society dictate how they're supposed to present themselves and how they're supposed to act, how they're supposed to look. People just, you know, women just really standing in it. So, so what's the definition? We had a of whole hoes? conversation about this the other day about men being called hoes and women being called hoes, and like how you tell, you know, little girls and little if you have kids, right, sons and daughters, right. how I feel like they always treat the boys differently than they treat the girls when it comes to calling them hoes. And we had a whole conversation because Envy, you were saying that you tell your son the same thing, but I do feel like society always makes it seem like when a girl does something, she's a hoe. When a boy does something. It's not the same. I just feel. I mean, it's it been socially, it's been socially acceptable for men to have whole like behavior since the beginning of time, and um, nobody blinks an eye. Like nobody cares, nobody thinks or says anything. I think it's um, disgusting when men sleep with a bunch of different <laughs> men. I am part of the faithful black male community. Black men don't cheat. I don't know what you're talking about, Jay. Whatever. <laughs> it's been socially acceptable for y'all to act that way, but if a woman is promiscuous, promiscuous or whatever. Women is just judged harshly and it's not fair. It's just not fair. We're all humans. We all trying to work through some things. We all have trauma. We all trying to figure life out and we all deserve that chance to be able to figure it out without somebody sitting there and labeling you something or calling you something and um, you believe in it, so. Yeah, well, what, 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 what do you define as a, as a whole? Because the reason I ask is we just, you know, we talked about uh, Nikki and Cardi and Foxy and Kim and even though they wear provocative stuff and, and Two of them, Trina and, and Cardi, has been stripped. That doesn't mean that they are a quote-unquote hoe. They just wear provocative clothes, you know? So what is the definition of a hoe? Cause right. Because people don't call them hoes. I, I've never heard anybody call them hoes. I don't know a bunch of people that they've been with. So, you know, so I, I wouldn't put them in a the category of when we when people call a woman a hoe. Or do we? Or do you? Right. I'll, I'll be honest. My... um. I don't, I don't really know to answer your question. Like the way I was brought up and the way I was taught in, um, in society, what I thought was a hoe was a woman who slept with a lot of men. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm older, <laughs> I don't know um, if the word um, means the same thing to me and I don't really know how to label it. I, I've asked that question uh, to a lot of people because on my project, the reason that it's called hotels is because it's tales. So I'm talking to like a lot of my close, my closest friends, um, family and stuff like that. And so I'm asking them questions of just about their life in general. Um, and that question comes up and I get a lot of different answers. But for me personally, I'm still trying to figure out what I think a hoe is or whether the term is even relevant. Um, in this time in age. Yeah, because on Girl Like Me, you sound like you competing against, as you say, the hoes. Yes, there are different, um, on the project, there are different perspectives, obviously. Uh, there are women um, who who feel like they have to compete uh, to... The Instagram models, as you said, the script was... Yeah, they got to compete with the Instagram girls to feel worthy and to feel loved. And I have um, a girlfriend who talks about that, about, you know, having to compete. And, like, she uses she's learned as she's gotten older to use sex as a way to feel worthy. And she's kind of like, um, she doesn't, she don't know how to feel about that. She don't know whether to feel empowered about it. Like, you know, I figured out how to make myself kind of stand out in a world where the society is telling me I'm not beautiful. And at the same time, it kind of makes her feel bad that she is not accepted for just who she is. So it's a lot of different perspectives on the project. And I feel like a lot of women will be able and men, a lot of people will be able to listen to it and see themselves in it. Like when I when I do a project for me, it's more so about you, more less about me telling you how to feel more so about you seeing the project and you feeling how you want to feel and like, you, you know, um, getting your own perspective from it. Yeah, because some of these topics have been coming up a lot lately, right? Like women 
demanding things from men in exchange for sex, like money, financial things. And there's even a skip before a song where that's what women do even when they're married. Like, all right, I guess I got to give him some if I want to make sure that I get this. And I see a lot of people talking about that, like on social media. You know, some people will say, well, you sleep with these men for free anyway and don't get anything out of it. So, you know, that that's not smart. And then some people will say, if he's not paying this for me and he's not doing this for me, then I'm not giving him any. So that does seem like something that you touch upon on your project as well. So that's another one of your stories from somebody you spoke to? Um, that was from a group of uh, older women. Um, my mom had them over for dinner, some of her friends or <laughs> whatever, which that tale, <laughs> we didn't know they was going to going, go off the way they did. I was so shocked, but it goes to show that um, everybody has a story and every woman has a story. You can know, you know your granny as one way, but if you go through her whole life, she didn't have some experiences that you may not know about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, I call your granny how bad. I mean, <laughs> yo, I say that all the time. Your mama, your grandma, your great grandma, every woman that you love. I'm, they yeah, didn't, they every, didn't pop that pussy for a goon. Love has a story, and yes. it, you know it started one way, and it may end up another. But you know those experiences are what makes you who you are, and so. Um, yes, that tale was crazy. Listen to we probably cut out the the good stuff. Oh, do you, do you, do has you, anybody ever called you a hoe? Like, do you have you ever been labeled a hoe throughout? No, your I haven't been labeled a hoe because um, I, I've always been in like the entertainment industry and been a singer. So my focus hasn't necessarily been on like being just out there and dating mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Like I dated um, like some of the people that I was around, which which you know were fellow musicians and stuff like that. So I wasn't really out there in the dating world because I was always singing and stuff. So, you know, that's the price tag skit. Angelie was talking about. I want to go back to that for a second. Do, do you do you do you really believe that the wife is just fucking the husband just to get something out of him? No, I don't believe that. Okay. I don't believe, and that's not what she said. She said that 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 happens sometimes. That's the barter. That's the exchange that you have. Sometimes you may be like, okay, um, I'm trying. I want to do this. I'm trying to get this. Let me let me figure out what it is that I can do to get it from her. And mm-hmm. that's just a, uh, something that happens. But it's not what you do all the time. Obviously, if you marry right. somebody, you marry them because you love them. Right. You know, you ain't marrying them most most of the time. You ain't marrying them. Cause you're trying to get something from me. Yeah, you. That's you, the best you, time to ask for something when you're having sex. That's the best time when you're in the middle of it and you like, give me, baby, give you anything, child. Yeah, you you had me thinking about it as I was as I was listening to it because I was like, well, you know, I have sex with my wife because that's an expression of love, and you know, also doing things for her is also an ex- another form of love. It's another expression of love. You know what I mean? So I don't look at it as a transactional. Yes, I'm not saying that your wife sleeps with you to get things. I'm not saying that, Charlamagne. You don't have to. <laughs> He's really upset. Yeah, yeah, no, he is very upset. <laughs> like, no, I'm not saying that. No, um, it's, it's, I, I'm not going to lie. It's actually kind of fun when it's with somebody you love and you right there and you doing whatever you're doing. I don't know what this was, but yeah, what right when it's about that? to happen, Jeez. you look up and you're like, by the way, <laughs> yeah, I saw this bag. I mean, it's, I think that it could be kind of fun when you're in a relationship. Jasmine, he and just love. got mad kinky. She's moving her hands all crazy. Then she said, I look up and I say, hey, can I get a bag? What are you doing, <laughs> Yee? What is on your mind right now, Yee? Listen, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, you, said, I, you said something else earlier, Jasmine, too. You said, I, I think you were talking about one of your friends, and you said that she said she was sleeping with men to make herself feel worthy. Is that what you said? No, no, I didn't say that. I said that she's learned... Um, uh, okay, I'll I'll get candid with you. Being a, a brown skin girl, um, a lot of the times you don't feel like you, the way you look is considered beautiful, um, and you can add on to that. Being a brown skin girl, being fat, anything that's deemed un un, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's not it's not mm-hmm. the standard of beauty. Mm-hmm. Um, so as you're growing up. I would assume, because this is her tale, and you would have you would have to um, hear it and, and figure out how you feel. But I would I would assume that you try to figure out how to feel beautiful. And um, for her, she figured out that sex was a way that made men um, look at her as as being worthy. Not that she sleeps with a lot of men that, that and that makes her feel worthy, but it makes men look at her and feel like and makes her feel like she is. So. 
You know, believe it or not, that's how men feel too. You know, I, you know, I, I feel like you know men only do that to feed their ego, and and a lot of times it's because we have wounded ego, and we're right. hurt, and we're dealing with our own traumas. You know, and you know we do things to 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 make ourselves feel worthy. We got to have the fly car or the sneakers or the fly clothes. Or sleep with a whole bunch of different women. So I think it's the same thing. When you see a dude that's a hoe, it's the right. same thing. I would, I would agree. And that's what I'm saying. I mean, you can, you hear this project and what I wanted to do is to make you think about like why you do certain things and mm -hmm. then attack that. Like, look at that part. Like, why, why am I doing this? Why do I do it? If you love it and it makes you feel good and you then rock out, keep, keep doing it. But if you look at it and you say, you know what, that's not right. That started somewhere else. And that place, the, the place that it started is what I need to address. Then you address that. So it's just about self-reflection. And I, I just want to, you, know, you know, I just always talk about changing the narrative, how people think. Like, you know, when you hear these stories and you hear people saying, yeah, I want, I, I'm with him for the bag. I'm giving him this as a barter system. Like, you know, those are the type of things. All right, Envy. Okay. No. <laughs> and those are the things that, you know, as, and, and I tell you when I really want to change you know Envy want a Birkin. <laughs> yes, he does. Sure. I'm with him for the bag. <laughs> I can afford my own Birkin. But anyway. Okay. Okay. But anyway, now when it comes to when you start having daughters, it makes you want to look at life a lot differently because at first, like you said, you don't want your daughter to be like, no, I'm with him for the bag. If he's not buying you a bag, he's not, he, he, he send him back to the streets. And that's the, the narrative I want to change so these young women realize I don't I, I want to do it on my own. And same that's thing with right. these dudes. I tell these dudes, like, don't fuck up and, and follow all these quote-unquote rappers and athletes because they live in a horrible life. Be yourself. And that's the, the narrative I want to change so people understand that. Yes. Now, yes, of course you want a woman to um, know that she can do all that on her own. You also want her to know that um, it's not wrong to expect that from a man as well. So... Um, it's a fine line though. It's like, um, I, I don't agree with dating somebody just because they have money, but I do agree with knowing your worth and being like, you know what? Um, you match where I'm at in my life and I'm, and, and I'm going to allow you to court me. So, anyway. cause sometimes it's hard to allow people to do stuff for you. Cause I used to always have that problem where you feel like, okay, I could do this for myself. I could get it for myself. And any, anytime somebody I'm with offers it, I'm like, no, I'm good. No, I don't need anything. When it's okay to be like, you know what? It would be nice. Or, oh, thank you so much. That's cool. That used to be hard for me to but you accept didn't ask for it, I would just That's the whole thing. You didn't ask for it. Yeah, but even if people would try to give me stuff, I would feel like I didn't want anybody to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like it was hard for me to accept somebody doing something for me because I never wanted them to look at me like I needed it or I wanted these things or that was, I just wanted to prove that I didn't need anything. Right. That's a lot. That's a reality. And then another reality is that some some women just don't feel worthy of it. Like some women don't feel like they deserve to have a man to um, treat them uh, well, not cheat on them, buying things and stuff like that. So it just depends on like your life and, and what you've seen and how you processed it. I was going to just say, I used to have these T-shirts that said hoes be winning. And we were talking about that the other day, too. And the reason why I did that was because I felt like one of the first things that people go to to try to discredit you is they call you a hoe. Whether or not it's true, whether or not they know anything about you, they'd be like, oh, she a hoe anyway, she a hoe anyway. So I had started this whole movement a long time ago, over 10 years ago, that was hoes be winning. We had, or maybe it was about maybe eight, nine years ago, and it was hoes be winning. We had shirts and everything that were made for that because I wanted to, just like you're saying, change that narrative of where everybody calls you a hoe and, you know, you're you're being successful at whatever it is that you're doing, just saying, okay, fine, call me a hoe, but I'm winning out here, you know? I mean, yeah, it's just about taking the power back from anybody. Any Anybody who has control over you besides yourself, nobody deserves that. So um, whatever it is that's holding you in that realm, you got to take your power back. You know, I saw an interview you did with Genius, and you said a lot of people don't want to feel anymore. And, and that's what's so interesting about Girl Like Me and price tag. Cause as soon as I heard them, I'm like, I cannot wait to debate with Jasmine. Like you made me, like you just saw, it made me feel away. You know what I mean? Like, why, I did. <laughs> how do you put that into your music? Like, how do you make people feel? How do you know when I'm writing this record, they're gonna feel this? Um, I don't. I mean, I'm just, I'm just speaking my truth, and um, I'm hopeful that people understand my heart and feel my heart, and people, um, you know, can relate to it in some type of way. But I don't necessarily know. Um, what people are going to feel. And that's why I feel like when I do write um, a project, it's so many different aspects and places that I'm coming from because I want to reach different people. And um, you can't do that if you're 
just one track minded and just doing a, one particular thing. So I try to reach different people with different things. Do you feel a consumption of music is, is so much that people don't sit with music that long? Because I get it too. Like people don't sit with music. They don't fall in love with music. It's not a, it's not a, a, a feeling. It goes so fast. It does. I mean, I, I I don't know if that has to do with social media, but everything is instant gratitude. You got to like whatever song you put out got to be the hottest at that point. Like you got like nobody takes a second and just breathes and just kind of listens to things and um, let it kind of sink into their spirit. And um, I think definitely you miss so much when you when you don't do that. I feel like the quarantine, though, is helping everybody to kind of slow down and look at things in a different way, um, you know? So I feel like that's one good thing about the quarantine is that people just, they can't move as quickly as they can, which makes them miss things that they need to learn. Does your label allow you to do that, to allow you to put out a record and allow it to grow, allow people to get a vibe? Or, or is it one of those things where they're you like, we gotta put out another single, we got it's not reacting as fast as we want. Nah, my, lab, my label good with me, they, they good. y'all know I've put out records every, Five years, right. so they, <laughs> you, they. You know, you're so talented, Jasmine. Like, you know, you you can sing, you can write, you can literally do this whenever you want to do it. But we know hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. So, do you feel like you're working hard enough? Um, no, I I haven't. Um, I haven't worked hard enough. Um, I think for me, it was a lot of different reasons. I allowed myself to be distracted by um, relationships that I was in and then like the, the falling out of it. And it just like, just uh, totally just, I don't know, just wiped, wiped everything out for me. And also some of it, I think is fear and um, and just not feeling like I deserve to be, um, I deserve to be successful. Like I, I, I believe at a certain point in my mind growing up, I probably felt like I don't deserve this. I, I don't think that I'm good enough to be a certain thing. And I think that I acted that out in my life and I allow myself to be distracted by certain things. And that's a lot of what I'm trying to unpack now. Like you know, telling myself that no, you just you you're talented, you you're worthy. This God put you in this position for a reason. You deserve to be um, where you are, and even further. And if you work hard enough, you can. And and that, but that's a lot to um, unpack and and to deal with. And um, but you got to be honest with yourself. So no, I don't think that I've worked hard enough um, for my own personal reasons. But I know that um, I'm where I am. I'm where I'm supposed to be. I know that. Do you think you've gotten to a place of worthy? What you say? Do you think you've gotten to a place of worthy? I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I feel like, um, like I said, after you deal with a cancer scare and what I'm going through with my mom, everything in your life kind of just changes. And um, I'm getting to a place where where I do feel worthy. And, and, And also... I'm like getting so strong in the word and 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 my relationship with God has just uh, increased tremendously. So I am getting to that place, yes. I remember you had said that when it wasn't fun anymore, you weren't going to do it anymore as far as creating music. So yeah. what inspired you to say, okay, now I'm ready to put out an album? Um, well, it's a project, first of all. It's, uh, it's not an album, I, my album, I'm going to be working on the album after this, but uh, the main part for me was just about connecting with my girlfriends and and being able to share the the talks that we have and um, putting that on record and that kind of inspired the project. Like you know, I'll be having some dope conversation. I have some dope, really dope girlfriends, and like as amazing as people think I am. I feel like my girlfriends are even better and I've like learned so much from them. And that's why I think it's so important to have like a group of women around you to mm-hmm. um, feed off of, they, to hold you accountable, to love on, to love you and, and remind you who you are. And so um, that kind of inspired the project was that I wanted uh, to share that. You know, girl like me is so interested too, man. Cause when you talk about the scrippers and the IG models, yeah, they be doing their thing. But brothers like the corporate women too, and the college women and the bartenders. Like, why is it the IG models and scrippers that seem to intimidate women? I mean, that's all we see. We always on Instagram. That's all we see, and that's mm-hmm. what 
That's mm -hmm. what men seem to praise the most. I mean, it, every man that got something or even don't, you know, is uh, praising Instagram girls and they, they want a girl to look a certain way no matter what they look like. You know, the girl's supposed to look. <laughs> <laughs> That ain't right. No matter that how many right. stomachs and chins they got. <laughs> <laughs> they don't care, baby. They don't care. What they, they, they be leaving a comment and then you go look at their page and you're like, now hold up. You it, have no it, right to say it. It's rude or wrong. <laughs> it's rude or wrong. <laughs> Do you think it's just sex that keeps a man? No. Obviously not. Your wife's still with you, Charlamagne. Come on now. First of all, <laughs> I'm amazing in the bedroom. You know Envy. Yeah, it's awkward. Exactly. Why, why would he know? <laughs> <laughs> awkward too much. <laughs> Sorry, Jasmine, uh, continue. This, no. this could be a part two. <laughs> the answer She's to the question is down. no, though. She's writing it down. Yeah. No, 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 but, but, I mean, <laughs> ask yourself that. Do you think it's just sex that, I mean, you're a man, so is it just sex that keeps a woman? No. And, and I thought about that when I was listening to the two songs this morning. I'm like, it's, it's more than just the sex, you know, it's, who this person is, you know? Like I said, the 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 person that my wife is, like me having sex with her is, is just part of the privilege of being with her. You know what I mean? That's just an extension of of her. Right. Could you be with somebody if the sex wasn't good though? But everything else was. Hmm. <laughs> That's a question for a man, because I feel like women, we are so used to sacrificing things that we would right. sacrifice you know, uh, sex. We will sacrifice feeling good if we love the man that much. But I'm not sure that a man would do that. I don't. I don't know. I, I feel like women would though, because I mean, women. If a women, it's, let's say you don't reach orgasm, let's say you don't come, let's say it's not good. Could you still stay? Would you stay? By the way, a lot of women don't have orgasms and never have. There's a, a large said, percentage. I just said that. Listen, I feel like women are so used to sacrificing and, and have been told from the beginning of time that we are supposed to sacrifice that we can do with a lot of, we can do without a lot of things. And we do without a lot of things, um, you know, when we love a man. But I don't know if a man can reciprocate that type of love. And I, I and y'all faces are telling me that y'all can't. You know what, to be honest, I don't know what you're talking about, Jay. To be like, all right, so my wife faked orgasm for like the first Six years of my of our marriage, right? <laughs> faked it, right? I can no, I can see that. Charlamagne, Charlamagne, have you ever faked it? But I thought I was doing it well, and, and, and she, I wasn't. But I was hurt when she told me that. Now think about it. Could I she fake wasn't an orgasm? Hurt. Can I fake and, like, and act like I come and I didn't? I don't think I could be in that type of relationship. Imagine if your wife never made you come, Charlamagne. You're really the most light skinned nigga I ever met in my life. <laughs> oh my I'm being honest. <laughs> That was good that you said that. I appreciate that. I'm being, that I said. talk about it all the time. She faked it. So could you imagine being with somebody that does not make you orgasm, Charlamagne? You talking to Jasmine? Why are you talking I'm to asking, me? No, Jasmine <laughs> said she can. I want to know from a male Jazz, perspective. Jasmine said wants to know from a male's perspective. I'm asking you. I'm going to give your wife a hug when I see her, man. I feel <laughs> bad that she went through that. She might still be faking it. For Why real? <laughs> I'm leaving, man. Goodbye, man. I'm just fucking <laughs> Look, that's hey, trauma. No, that's trauma. hey, that's Jasmine, trauma. you wrote a song that's about for, it. That's trauma for tag. her more than for you. <laughs> Jasmine wrote a song for guys. For, it's called Price Tag. No. Yeah, <laughs> that's why she got that Birkin tree at home. No. Uh, my no, wife, like, my wife comes regularly, like every day. And yes, she does, you motherfuckers. But excuse me, I'm with asking you, you Charlotte. With you, you or with the, the toy? With the toy? Why are you talking to me when we have the love? Because Jasmine, Jasmine just here. said on a male. Uh, she wants to know a male's. Opinion, so ask you. I, I think you and Charlamagne should talk offline. I'm just asking, I'm just curious. <laughs> this is crazy. Why now, is it so hard for you to answer? Is it a yes I don't even no? know what the question is. He just started venting <laughs> about not being able to make his wife come. I don't even know what the question is. Charlamagne, would you every was to know, have you, has he ever made you come? <laughs> No, I had to tell him step his jaw game up. His jaw game wasn't up to par. The question is, <laughs> Jasmine said, Charlamagne, if you were, if your wife never made you come, would you stay? Could you stay with a woman that doesn't yeah, make you all? Yeah, because we can figure it out. Like you know, what I'm saying, like there's all types of books and different YouTube tutorials we could watch. I'm sure to. to That's good. I didn't say your wife. Out. I said a woman. Period. I didn't a woman. Say your wife. A woman. First of all, black men don't cheat. I only know my wife, Jasmine. What <laughs> is this? What I is know. this I you? He was talking about before, not even now. All right, before yeah. Charlemagne. I, I appreciate that that you would take, you would read books and stuff. 
<laughs> but Jasmine, what if, what if, but if your man had like a really small penis, would that matter to you? Could you do that? No, not that. Damn it, man. <laughs> She's like, I'm fine with not coming ever and bad sex, but not a small penis. No, not a little, not a little ding ding. But um, the sex, I feel like you can work on. You can't really work on the size of your penis. That just is what it is. And it's either gonna hit the spot or it's not. Like you're either gonna be satisfied or not. So I wouldn't accept that. Yeah. I know one thing. Soon as Dr. Miami start doing that, boy, y'all in trouble. Baby, the lines will go around the block. Okay. <laughs> Look, we gonna we gonna be paying for that. Like, baby, okay. have, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Happy birthday. Exactly. Now, let me ask you a question, Jeff. Have, have you ever had? Have you? ever had your own insecurities when it comes to the strippers and the IG models? And and the, and the reason I ask is because, you know, you, you lost a lot of weight, you look great, you look great before, but, you. you know, was was that part of the reason? No. Okay. Um, and have I ever felt any way about the IG models? No, they didn't necessarily make me bad, make me feel bad about myself, but I did um, look at their lives and I was amazed by all the things that they got because of their beauty. And that's kind of where mascara came from was just like looking on Instagram. And I was like, damn, they on another trip. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I just thought it was fascinating, but I never felt um, any type of way about that. And that didn't make me want to lose weight. I was, I had gotten very big from the time I started in this industry until the time I needed to lose some weight. Um, so I just I just did that to take care of myself. I just needed to do better with that. Well, what's crazy though, people had something to say when you were big and then when you lost the weight, they were saying you were looking sickly. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand that. I don't understand. I feel like people, um, some people just like to have something to say. And I think social media is just a platform for them to do it. And, and it makes some people feel better about themselves, I, I guess, to, say something about somebody so it, it wasn't that deep when i wrote um what i wrote back to people it wasn't in a, a angry way I, I was just like I, i'll be wanting people to like look into themselves and like figure out what's wrong with them <laughs> like yeah figure out why you do certain things so you could stop not not because it makes me angry just trying to help people. Now, Jasmine, the album's coming out in January, January 8th, I believe. And we only got a few songs so far, right, that we were able to hear ahead of time. So do you have songs on there about your current relationship? Uh, no, this was not the current relationship project. I had um, some things that I needed to get off my chest from just some years ago. Uh, so I, I feel like my actual album will probably be more about just being in relationship probably you know with one person and just the things that you deal with in that realm but this project was based on like just you know stories that i've i've had and conversations i've had with my girlfriends and like stuff that i've dealt with before i even met him that's good man you don't let these women you know hold them go to waste you know what i mean so we got to tell our stories, <laughs> tell your stories right do you like do you like the state of R and B right now where R and B is as far as music and radio and, 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 and the music that's coming out? Yeah, I mean I don't listen to a lot of music, but um there are some amazing, amazing women. Um I love SZA, I love her, I love Ari. Um I, I even listen to a little bit of uh Queen Queen Naja. Queen Naja. Naja. I, I like her too. It's a lot of women that um I think are carrying R and B right now, so I'm I'm good with it. I wonder if you Do realize you the impact you've made on the game. You know, what I mean, do you even stick around long enough to to, to, to take it in? Because you know, 2011, you left, came back 2015, left again. Like, do you even give you a chance to take in what Jasmine Sullivan has has brought to the game? Um, nah. You know, I I don't, I really try not to focus on it, and if I feel like I'm like being a little obsessive with like looking at comments and stuff like that and what people are saying about me i try to get off because um it is good to you know get feedback and hear people kind of give you praise or whatever but too much of it i, I honestly believe it just naturally will go to your head and so i try to stay away from that because i don't want i don't want to feel myself too much in that area where i feel like i'm so good that i can't grow so i always want to be in a place where i feel like you know, I can I can grow, so I try to stay away from that. 
Do you think you carried baggage from your last relationship into your current one? How do you deal with something like that? Um, do I think I carry baggage? I guess some. I'm not, not not even from my last, probably from some relationships um, even before that. Um, it's hard. I mean, it's hard to do work on unpacking uh, the things that you've dealt with and the traumas and stuff that you've dealt with. And, um, you know, the best thing to do, obviously, is to deal with it first before you even get into a relationship. But th that's not realistic. A lot of times you think you've dealt with some things mm -hmm. and you realize that it's still there when you get into a relationship. So all you really can do is just hope that you got somebody that's uh, that loves you enough to be understanding and kind of ride with you through it and, and you know, just help you as much as they can. I, my, my homegirl, my homegirl, Tiffany, she says she won't even date somebody if they're not in therapy or haven't been to therapy. That's good. I mean, my boyfriend um, had a therapist when he first, when I first met him and I thought it was crazy. Like when I, I was like, <laughs> um, I was like, girl, he got a therapist I, in my head because I wasn't used to mm -hmm. seeing that. If I felt like, okay, something's wrong. And now that obviously some time is going by and I'm, I'm a little more mature. I'm like, that's a good thing that that man Hell felt yeah. like you know, see somebody to deal with some things um, in his past or in his present or whatever that's going on. And um, yes, but but the stigma that I feel like black people have with therapy, um, I definitely had it at first because my reaction wasn't to praise him for doing it. My reaction was I was scared. I was like, well, what's wrong with him? Instead of, you know, being like, that's great that you are doing it. I go but to yeah. therapy once a week because when you talked about you know, not feeling deserving or not feeling worthy, man. It'd be them childhood traumas and them traumas that you went through that you carry into adulthood that make you feel like you're you're not whole, you're not worthy, you're not deserving. You got to go deal with that. Yes, yes, because you end up at, at reacting that in your life. You know, some things that, that you should do or you know you should do, you don't, not even knowing why, and it's because you, you don't feel like you deserve it and mm -hmm. um, you have to deal with that. You still vegan? I know you had went vegan. The, the 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 role with your mom help her out. I'm still vegan. So listen, I was I was alkaline vegan. Y'all know Dr. Sabi. Yes. Dr. Sabi, yep. When I first started, I went to um her name is my aunt. She's in Brooklyn, I think. She was Dr. Sabi's first wife. So she started mm -hmm. everything with him. So when we first went there, we were like completely alkaline. And then like maybe six months into it, I was like, oh, they got fake cheese. <laughs> 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 they, got, they got vegan, vegan meat, vegan beef. So I started eating that kind of stuff and I gained a little weight. But I want to go back to doc, um, Dr. Sabi's way of living because I felt so good. Mm -hmm. I felt so like my body just felt so good. I mm -hmm. had so much energy and it's definitely a difference between um, just plant-based eating. And then once you start adding all that processed food, so right. I'm going to go back to that. Even mentally, like your head feels so much more clear. I was, I felt so good. Like every day I woke up energetic. I was like wanting to work out. I was wanting, I was just, I was thinking straight. Like it was, it, you could tell the difference definitely. What do you do with all the music? Because I wonder what you do in between these hiatuses. Like, you know, you haven't put out a project since 2015. Do you record still or do you write songs and give them away? You just got a bunch of music in the stash. What is it? I actually don't, which I'm going to start doing. I'm going to start just working all the time. But I'll be just living my normal, regular life. I'll just be whatever, wherever I'm at in my life, I'll be doing that. Um, sometimes I'll write for somebody if they, like, call me and, and ask me or request, like, um, marry called me a few times like during break or whatever and uh, that was amazing i still can't right. get on the fact that mary like calls me i'm like <laughs> but um for the most part i i just i just live a normal life yeah i, just... I think that's amazing though mm -hmm. to live, to be able to balance that right with the work and to also live a normal life like sometimes we do need to take a break and that's how you also find things to write about i would assume definitely that for me that's that's how I get um, inspiration for my next project is the fact that I take so long in between and, and I just be living and I just write about it. See, that still works, so that's a write-off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> have you figured out a way to have fun? Because I know when you left in 2011, you said it's because the, the, the industry wasn't fun anymore. So have you found that balance? It's fun now. I mean, quarantine for me, <laughs> 
Cause I'm such a homebody. And like, you don't go yes. Anyway, so this I is fun can, for you. I can live my life. I'm like, oh, I ain't gotta go to win. Oh, no, this is perfect. So it's it's definitely fun for me now. But I think um, now that I'm older, I'm able to enjoy whatever moment that I'm in. So even once quarantine is over and we're able to go out and stuff like that, and I have to work and do things like that, I'll be able to find something in it to find my joy. How did you feel about Megan um, the Stallion sampling holding you down? I was happy. I was surprised that she um, knew that song. I, she's like 20 something. Mm -hmm. How old is she? she young. 20? Yeah, yeah, she young. So I was surprised that um, she knew that song, but I love Megan. I love Megan with her, her strong knees. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jasmine, yeah, practice that at home. We hope you come back um, when your album drops so we can have more conversations. Project, 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 yes. Uh, what's the difference? Hotels is a project. It's a conceptual project. Oh, uh, got you. Yes. <laughs> okay. So so I can't wait to hear more hotels because the two I heard sparked a very lively conversation. Yes. Okay, good. That's mm. great. Thank y'all for having me. Yeah, and I want to tell you Thank something you. too. Uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes via Tyler Perry said, even if you don't feel worthy, just know that God feels you're worthy. Mm. I felt that. Word. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yep. All right, it's Jasmine Sullivan. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Peace. Hotels.